Hey everybody, this is Saul Castaneda with MCSE Green Wheels, and today my brother's here to help us. So, there's that. What's that? And uh, for most of you that don't know, those are the first two initials of the shop itself. And then the rest are mine. Who cares? Anyways, today, guys, is a very special day because uh, after a lot of running around and trying to get this together and trying to put all this stuff together and not spending a, a crazy amount of money on stuff and tools that we didn't need because we could do it. Uh, today will be our fill day. Today we are going to be filling our 1993 Ford Mustang GT with a Generation 2 Coyote Illuminator. So, for most of you that don't know, that's what we've been doing to this guy. Now, may, many people would ask, why did it take so long? Well, if you can see the car when you do see it, once we get it started, We've been saying it's got to go back to paint. John's going to do us a favor because we see some some blemishes with the paint. We do not like. Plus, we just spent a whole bunch of buttload of cash. But the reason that we're doing this, the reason that it took us so long is because we drove this car about seven years ago. We picked it up out of Antioch. It was supposed to be a simple project, and it became what it has become. And the reason for that is because the only thing original on this car are the two doors and the trunk. We have changed out pretty much everything from pillars to uh, frame rails to the door pillars and to the floors and front to back and quarters and fenders and bumpers and you know what I'm gonna stop I'm just gonna continue sunroof. with telling you and sunroof let's not forget of all the detrimental stuff but so today it's a very good day because it just gets us closer to the finish so we can start it in here it and see where our mistakes are as far as what's gonna leak what's not gonna leak what we're gonna have to change out but the best thing about it is that we've crossed a big threshold that we've been waiting for because now we go back to paint and then we start our interior getting us closer to the finish line and at the same time bringing us closer to finish up bringing in our 1993 notchback that we call the grunt so today we're just gonna give you a quick little uh, education on this on the on these uh, fluid fails because there's a lot of people out there are 5% population, we're not going to say who that is, of people watching on our YouTube channel, you know, you know, you get confused with stuff, you know, oils look the same, you know, stuff smells the same, green is purple, purple is orange, you know, whatever, whatever, so much to worry about. So we're going to try and keep this as easy as possible and kind of give a little education with the fluid fill. So for today, not only are we filling up our engine, we're also going to be priming it and getting it ready for start. We're only about a couple gallons of 93 octane away from doing that. So. We're starting off with a fairly simple one, which is our coolant. Our coolant right here, now it may vary for car to car. It may have a deck school, so it may be pink. If you have a Volkswagen, it's also pink. If you have a Land Rover, it's purple. If it's BMW, it's blue. If it's GM, it's orange. But other than that, for most of these older cars, it's green. Is it, so is please. it pink because of breast cancer? It's not pink because of breast cancer. It's, I'm not entirely sure why they do it that color. I think it's just so you could think it's pink lemonade for your husband. Anyways, uh, this is green. Green will be what we're going to use in our engine here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fill that bad boy up with some of this. This is a, uh, uh, this is a full concentrate, so we'll be kicking it down. We'll be taking half of this and uh, mixing it with water putting it in this bad boy right next door to this these this guy right here we have this is our gear for our differential this is gear fluid and this little tiny bottle right here which has been kicked around and it looks like hell which it is is friction modifier which most Fords and most newer cars still use we still have our differential most Fords always do use the friction modifier which is what we're going to use along with our uh, royal purple here we're going to open up our differential at the top pour and we're going to pour this in. Hence, this little piece right here will be giving us a helping hand. You can find this at AutoZone for about five bucks. Uh, it actually helps really, really good, man, when you're in tight situations like we are in here. We're on the floor. We don't have a lift. So we have to use this guy right here and hope for the best that it doesn't fall in our mouths. Moving on. Right down here we have brake fluid. Now, brake fluid, obviously, you know, is to change the air inside your car. I'm just kidding. This is what we need for stopping power, and uh, of course we're going to be using the DOT3, that's what's just recommended, so we're going to stick with it. There's also a DOT4, but I think that's the synthetic stuff, and there's also DOT2, I think, for motorcycles and whatnot. There's also one that's manual, but we don't need manual fluid because we have a cable. Moving on down, we have power steering fluid here. Now we have plenty of this guy right here because, you know, we're, we're afraid that we may, gonna, we may need more than what we think. 
But other than that, this will be giving us the smoothness in our turning ratio with our nice APR rack and pinion setup. So we'll be able to corner turns and get away from cops as fast as we can. Just kidding. Moving on down. It's like AGR, not APR. Oh, sorry, yeah, AGR, rack and pinion, not APR, AGR. Uh, I'll take that back. So, per Mr. Glenn, he uh, gave us information and a couple other things that we went through for Tremec, obviously. Tremec said that I will blow my transmission up using this stuff because it's not Tremec. It's Castro, but going through a couple forums and the reassurance of Mr. Glenn, gotta love that dude right there. He kind of put us down, gave us a good listing of a couple ones that we can use and the one he's using. So we're gonna stick with it, but we'll see you on that track. And moving on to the last and not least, but almost most important, almost last and not least, is our motor oil. Now most people are looking at it and they say, 5W50, what the hell? Well, you know what guys, we're going with what our cap says. Now most people are thinking that this is a generation one coyote from, or a generation two coyote engine from a F-150. I will assure you it is not. This is an illuminator. And so I am following the specs that are on the cap and my, my oil cap right on it, it says 5W50 Motocraft synthetic blend, full synthetic. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna follow what that thing says and I'm gonna put on the 5W50. Now you're probably wondering why I'm doing here with my oil filter. Now the reason I had to take this off, we had to concoct a little bit of a pump to get the oil up in order to prime this engine because with this thing that has never been turned on, we're gonna have to push oil through all the valleys and all, and, and all through the whole head and we're gonna try and get it up there as much as we can. So I went out and bought me a little pump. You can get it at your Home Depot. It's one of those garden sprayers that show, you know, put out the uh, the disinfectant or like uh, uh, the stuff they use to kill whatever you want, you know, the bug killer or whatnot. So I went and picked it up. It was $11. I had to do some modern modifications to it to make it work, but it will help us. And we did do a little trial run. We put about two two quarts in there, give us a half a gallon. We're down a little bit, half of that. But we're gonna do and see. We're gonna go ahead and try and see and pump in at least four quarts into this bad boy, which the recommended amount says it's 7.6. So we're just gonna go ahead and put eight quarts in this guy and let him sit and then continue to fill, out, fill it up. One of the last things, last components that we'll be adding will be our gas, which we'll be using 93 uh, octane proof on there. Octane proof, we'll be uh, thinking alcohol. We'll be using uh, the 93 octane on there and then uh, we should be ready to fire this bad boy up. So why don't we get started, man? We'll show you, cause this is gonna be a little tedious. We're gonna be rolling around the floor, but we're gonna start off with priming the engine. I got my little device right here. It's a regular uh, weed spray. Uh, weed spray, you know, it's uh, it's for a weed killer and whatnot. And uh, what I had to do, I had to take a little concoction here and uh, a little tuning and stuff. I got little holes here just to give me a little flexibility to go around my sway bar. At the same time, I have a little uh, angle from uh, one of the brakes. Uh, uh, fittings but this piece right here what I ended up doing this is a quick disconnect for your garden hose now the I had to tap the inside of it because it was just the perfect width of the inside of that uh, of that uh, fitting for uh, my oil filter and I had to tap that that was a, at the tap at a, I had a, a tap that was a M22 by 1.75 so just remember that threading guys if you're gonna go this route and the same thing right down in here I had to tap that too to the size of this which was the uh, opening of the uh, gun because I had that con connected directly to it before I realized that my sway bar was in the way so now with that said I had to put this on there, but that was a tap size of M14 by 1.75. So we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, fill it up through here. We're gonna pump up, pump it up, and then uh, easily squirt it in there because uh, they say this is the easiest way to do it. It has been working. I did a little trial run, a little test run, and it has been working. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it one more tight, just to make sure. And uh, as you can see right back here, I took a piece of glove. I took a glove cut off a finger, stuffed it with some uh, some paper towels, and I stuffed it in the little hole that goes right here on the side. I don't want any oil coming back. I wanna make sure that I get it all the way up into the cylinder heads. Now, due to the fact that the oil is just a little thicker than any kind of solution that you're gonna end up putting in this thing as far as weed killer or, you know, whatever, uh, this stuff, you know, it, it pours really heavily, so I have to kind of tip it up and uh, You'll hear when I do this, when I push it, I get nothing, even though there's pressure in here, but I gotta kinda tip it.
And we're out. So it is going in there, as you guys can hear. It is reaching the center here. I opened up the uh, the cover to the valve cover on top, just so I can make sure I can hear it. It is traveling up there, so that's a plus. I got two quarts in here. I'm gonna go ahead and dump two more in here, and then just push these through. This is again 5W50 oil. This is not cheap, so we're trying to protect it as best we can. You know, we got Putin text. This is your standard power steering fluid. Um, it's not like nothing fancy like some of the uh, import vehicles use different type of power steering. This is just the regular OEM power steering. Which, that's probably it. Because we have no movement. Yeah. And unless the pump's actually operating, this is not going to cycle. So, I'm not even going to crank this today. Just, I just made contact and I just gave it a nice. Is that what it requires? Just green cooler? Damn, I don't even know. Okay, we can research it. Right, let's look it up. It's probably going to take like the gold one or something. Go ahead and remove this guy because uh, that's all done. So, what I'm probably gonna run into trouble is right here. Okay, no big deal. There we go. We'll cover that up real quick. Let me get my oil filter, make sure I get that to fall in there. Let me take this guy off. to show you guys like what I was talking about with my little invention that I made so this fitting here is for your regular garden hose and it's a quick disconnect fitting so I just went ahead and threaded the inside like right here and I dropped an o-ring at the bottom just to give it a good seal now the problem I ran into was in this piece right here because I threaded it to fit the tip of my spray gun but it ended up being that I couldn't fit it because my sway bar was in the way. So I gave it this little 90. I coated it with some extra Teflon tape because it was a little loose. And then I dropped this little extra extension so I could put my hose on it. So it gave me enough flexibility to go around my sway bar and still do the job. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the little mess I made down here. And tighten down my oil filter. There we go. We didn't lose too much, but it was still enough. But I'm happy that we were able to fill it the right way. You know, prime it up, prime up the engine real good. There we go. Now, got all that cleaned up. Yes, sir. And it was a little bit messy there towards the end, but it's okay. We were forcing oil up the valleys, so not a problem there. Because, uh, you know, at least we got, now that we got our filter in, you know, we don't have to worry about it. It's probably just going to sit up there because it's going to give it a seal or leak into the filter, which is still not a bad deal. So what we're going to do now, especially right now that we got everything, we got all that oil running to the top side, we're going to go ahead and finish filling it. All right, let's go. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump it in there. I know I got about three, say about three and, three and a half quarts in there. I did have four in here. I started off with two. I got it down to about here. I filled it up again. I had it up to about here. Now I'm down to here. So I think I got about three, three and a half, three and a quarter, which isn't bad. So we were able to hear that it was traveling through all the valleys. We were able to hear that it was going through the hose. And you were able to see that it came out. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go ahead and compensate. We need eight quarts. That'll be four with what I squirted in there. And, uh, whoa. You know, I thought this was going to be a little, you know, not such a thick oil, but it's, uh, it's pretty thick. Our motor primed and it's going to be ready to rock and roll. One of the main fluids that we forgot that we didn't get is, of course, the more important one, our 93 octane fuel. So, being that it's nighttime, being that it's hungry, that I'm hungry, and being that I'm hungry, I'm calling this a night. Guys, I want to thank everybody on our Facebook page. Go on there. Go find yourself a Mustang. Go find yourself a Roller. We, play, we post them every day. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the likes. And thank you thank for everybody on Instagram. Guys, thank you for the comments. Thank you for the likes. I like the community. I like how everybody's communicating with each other and, you know, passing on the information that we should be doing in these forums and in these uh, platforms. Most importantly, I want to thank everybody here on YouTube. Guys, don't forget, we're also on Reddit. We're also on Basically. Tumblr, we're also on BitChute, we're also on a, lot, a bunch of other a bunch of other platforms. So don't forget to visit those two. Drop us a like, drop us a comment, give us some words of inspiration and hope. Guys, thank you very much. Remember, subscribe, 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 because we need you to. And always comment, always like, and subscribe. Guys, we'll see you, guys, we'll see you soon. We're going to get some gas in this bad boy. Plug up our intake lines, which is our vacuum lines. And let's go for a ride, at least to the alley. Have a good night, guys. Thanks.